Hey, Chris, how are we doing today? Hi, Ron. Doing great. How about yourself? I can't complain. Another exciting topic today. We get to talk about yeah. HIPAA hosting. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I, as I've told people, and maybe if you haven't heard any of our other things, we've done over 1,500 projects and probably two or 300 of those are HIPAA related or medical related. So we focus heavily on HIPAA. We love HIPAA. It's a big part of our business. It's our single largest vertical uh, that we focus on. So this is really exciting today. I get a lot of questions from our clients about HIPAA hosting. So what I wanted to do was generically talk about hosting because as a sales guy, that's what I do. But then I wanted to pick your brain where you can really dive in and give the folks today some in-depth what do you look at when you're looking and defining the environment that we're going to roll out one of these HIPAA projects that we do, right? What does that look like? And I want to break it down, you know, hardware, software, administrative requirements, uptime, stability, scalability, the BAA, all that kind of stuff. I want to cover all of yes. that today. So let's start with what is a HIPAA environment? Just go ahead and define what your definition of a HIPAA environment is first before we dive into, and then we'll start with hardware requirements after that. Great question. So this is definitely really close to my heart and uh, just getting into all of the HIPAA requirements is something that, like you said, we've done a lot of uh, literally, you know, from a HIPAA perspective, hundreds of different projects or implementations. And, you know, ultimately the biggest things that I would say for HIPAA is it needs to meet the HIPAA rules as spec'd out on the HHS Gov website. Now that's sort of obvious. So what does that mean? Well, they have sections that talk about hosting in detail, and we actually have videos that break it down for each of the different cloud providers, which is really exciting. So if you're interested in that, please take a look at the description where you can click on links. And we also have a HIPAA channel where you can find those for the different cloud providers and detailed dives on each of those. But one of the things I would say, Ron, in general, that's a nice framework is the high tech framework. Um, mm -hmm. And basically the high tech set of it's essentially like a checklist for security um, and a standard process to follow uh, to be able to ensure that these standards are met for security that are part of HIPAA. Now, what's really interesting about these hosting environments. And so going back to your question, you know, what would I consider to be HIPAA and how, how to choose, you know, so that it is HIPAA compliant essentially with the hosting, I would tend toward looking at, do they have the ability and even some kind of structure or process where they have a high tech template that we can go through like a blueprint uh, where we can literally go through and tell it to deploy an environment that just is a HIPAA hardened environment. Now, in this day and age, it really shouldn't be necessary that you're having to do everything from scratch. Um, we have really systems and tools and technology that should just be clonable, if you will, copy and paste, essentially, of the environment, the, the physical infrastructure environment. Now, for each client, that's going to be customized, and there is generally a cost footprint that depending on where you're at with your um, with your objectives with the project and your overall business, you may not want to absorb the full cost structure of a literal high tech standard that is extremely robust, right? Right. But there is there is sort of like a reasonableness to being able to feather down some of those expenses and make intelligent choices um, while still meeting the spirit and most of the letter of the high tech requirements. So that would be one thing that I would point out is that sort of blueprint idea and not having to recreate something, which in general, I would say with Azure, AWS, and Google, uh, we really get that in a material form, different names for each of them, but in a material form. The other thing would be, as you mentioned with the BAA, um, put your money where your mouth is. Uh, if you're going to actually do this, what do the T's and, you know, the T's and Q's on your actual BAA state that you're actually going to cover. And a lot of times there's a visualization where they show the areas of that they're taking responsibility for with regards to HIPAA. So you can sort of see, and we present this to a lot of our clients, just a visual diagram of whenever you host with this hosting provider, what are the areas that you're still going to be responsible for? Typically, that's going to be your application itself and what your application is going to sort of touch, if you will. 
Um, but as far as infrastructure and hosting and a lot of the physical networking and security, encryption at rest, tokenization possibly, you know, all of these areas are areas that generally the hosting provider should have some level of ownership of, if not complete ownership uh, from a BAA perspective. So those are a couple of things that I would say, Ron, that just from a very high level, and of course, we go into a lot of detail in some of our other videos, but those are sort of the big takeaway points on that. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, you mentioned just specifically about the uh, Amazon AWS, the Microsoft Azure, and the Google Health Cloud. So just as a high level for the audience here, um, historically, HIPAA hosting, even just two or three years ago, was running somewhere about $1,100, $1,200 a month on average when we were specking it for our clients. But I remember when we did Acon about three years ago, I think that one ran only about three eighty five dollars on Azure. And I think now we're even finding some of the ones we're getting all the way down to a couple hundred bucks a month. So I think Google Health Cloud tends to be one of the more expensive ones right now. Uh, I priced it about two weeks ago and it looked like for the same thing was going to be about 500. So I think just for the audience, most of these HIPAA environments, unless you're like United Healthcare with, you know, an environment that's going to house just a tremendous wealth of information, right? Yes. For most companies that would come to us that would work on a doctor patient portal or mobile app or whatever that we're doing, your hosting cost is going to run somewhere between two to $500 a month. Do you agree with that, Chris? I just kind of want to give people an idea because we're talking in these so vague terms. I wanted to get down to the nuts and bolts and let them know, hey, HIPAA hosting now to get the environment, someone who that is a trusted source that will sign a BAA, put their money where their mouth is and take care of that secure environment for you is going to run you two to 500 bucks a month ish. Is that, do you agree with that? Yeah. And it's so nuanced. I would say that generally, and this, this is all very much just a caveated conversation, unfortunately, because your situation is different than this generic sort of example, but Right. I would say that generally speaking, um, you can get away with somewhere under 500 a month as a starting place that in many cases is going to meet just a baseline for HIPAA um, with some of these cloud environments. Depending on your scenario, you may not even need hosting. You may be able to go, get away with a SaaS-based offering that does all of that for you and is packaged into the price. Um, and so it just depends on your situation. But if you know that you need to do the hosting, one of the things that I would say, Ron, just to this point, it is typically possible to get some reasonable ballpark estimate of what your hosting costs would be uh, from one, typically, maybe two at most conversations with a HIPAA specialist like Clarity. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Just want to take a quick break and remind you, we've got some free technical resources for you linked down in the description. Thanks for watching again. Let's get back to the video. Uh, you should be able to have a couple of conversations at most, typically just one, yeah. and get a ballpark that's pretty accurate. Um, yeah. And generally, the biggest thing I would say that drives the cost nowadays is the sort of less commoditized aspects, which tend to be newer capabilities um, or possibly adding more redundancy and high availability uh, things like that are going to add incremental cost. There are also a lot of security services and auditing tools that can mm -hmm. be added. So we're not really speaking to those here. We're just talking about the hosting when we say right. around two to five hundred a month. But yeah, I think that I think a lot of caveats there. But sure. just so folks understand, I I do think that's a reasonable starting place in many situations. Excellent. So let's start. Uh, and again, tokenization vault, like you said additional security, failover, redundancy, backups. I mean, there's so many nuances, as you, as you mentioned. So let's talk about a few of those. So we'll start with just hardware requirements. What are the basic hardware requirements? And if you want to lump that together with software, you can. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously you're going to go in and go, it requires a SQL database, that's software, but that's part of the hardware server that we need to spec because that's the environment. So if you want to lump hardware software together, Go ahead and let's talk about, let's say I came to you and I want Clarity to design and build me a HIPAA compliant doctor patient portal. Um, I want it hosted, don't know where yet, but I would like it. I'd like you to give me spec and decide where we're going to host it. And then we'll go ahead and integrate it with my hospital EMR, right? Epic. We'll just pick one, Epic, right? So there's the project. Walk through what, 
how would you spec the hardware software requirements, or at least what are the elements? Obviously, we don't know the size and how many patients and all that kind of fun stuff. So maybe hard to size, but what are the basic components and elements that you would have to spec to design that environment for me? Yeah, great question. And I love that example. That's pretty common. And I would say foundationally, it does depend on the software that you're working with and what its requirements are. Generally, just as again, sort of generalize this, there's going to be a tendency toward everything needing to uh, be encrypted at rest. And if that isn't a tendency, then you that should be a red flag for you that whoever you're working with isn't focusing on that. So everything should be encrypted at rest and on a sort of need to know basis. Um, and this extends into the software and hardware for the actual hosting environment. Absolutely does. Um, that is where everything is, is. Think of it like a bank vault. Um, you know, th that should be the most hardened security that's physically hardened um, and just obviously needs to be the more robust of everything. And so um, there should be multi-factor authentication to get into that environment, as well as an approval process for who has what rights to access what uh, within that environment. Typically, this is going to be cloud. So in the cloud, one of the things that is sort of a natural thing that needs to happen is a security appliance or a software security firewall. Typically, multiple layers of this make a lot of sense. So one example would be a content delivery network. Um, and being able to put together a content delivery network that stands in front of as a sort of first tier in front of the security firewall to protect against DDoS and certain IP ranges that are known hackers that we can just eliminate from ever having access to hitting our site in the first place. Um, but in addition to that, a you know web application security um, and security monitoring tool that is constantly reassessing whether or not we're actually compliant with high tech and HIPAA in general. And then of course, you've got to actually host the database and application. Normally this is all virtualized so that it's a flexible resource. So that's typically the concept. Usually that will look like a container. Uh, so everything's in a container and we're just deploying these containers um, you know, to the various different cloud environments so that we're essentially replicating the local environment into production and not having to reset everything up, uh, which is a really powerful concept, but I don't want to put everyone to sleep. But the, sort of the point is that you have these concepts of auditing and security that's, that's foundational, um, network access and security around the network and being able to physically get in through the public ports that people are accessing the application through. Any kind of connectivity to an internal network should typically be encrypted, uh, usually a VPN or point to point. That is a very robust proven model to integrate for this example to the Epic database. Um, so we would VPN tunnel um, and just make it very hardened. And then ultimately, as far as the infrastructure and the hosting, it needs to be scalable and high availability and redundant, encrypted at rest. Everything should be encrypted. There should be no like uh, secret keys that are not encrypted, this kind of a thing. Um, so again, pretty high level, but hopefully that helps at least get some tenants out there for folks. So you can certainly download. We have access to checklists uh, that we provide on our site. And you're welcome to email us if you want. You know, you can say, send me all of the checklists. Uh, we're happy to help. Uh, we really want to be a good actor in the HIPAA space and really help folks get knowledge. Um, obviously, you can go to the HHS site as well and go straight to the source of truth. Um, our goal is to just simplify this and sort of help elaborate and explain based on our experience. Yeah, appreciate that, Chris. So real quick summary for everybody. We talked basically about the hardware software requirements, right? Encrypted database, SSL certificate for the site, encrypted. And Chris kind of talked that as about a container, which really the container itself would have in the operating system, the encrypted database, the encrypted file storage for all the logs. You know, there's a whole lot within that. But if you want, schedule a meeting with our team. We'd love to talk to you uh, about your requirements. It's a free consultation. Um, what we try to do with these webinars is we try to go through and make it simple to understand. The HHS Gov site can be fairly difficult 
to uh, traverse and really understand the meat and potatoes through that entire site. There's a lot there. And that's what we do. We live in that area. So these videos are ones that you've normally requested from us. Thank you for that. Thank you for your involvement. We really appreciate you watching the videos and requesting which videos you want us to record. Hopefully this one's helpful. Please schedule a free consultation with us. We'd love to help you come up with and talk through your environment. Anything else you want to close off with, Chris? No, I think that's perfect. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for now.